Hi, my name is Chloe. I'm a dot painting artist and uh, last Saturday was my five year anniversary of dot painting and I thought I would share my experience with you all and hopefully you can learn something from it and uh, I did not uh, I did not write any list of points that I want to consider or cover. I just wanted to, you know, tell you all about the good and the bad and how I have chosen this path and hopefully you will get the message that if it's worth for you trying or not. Because I have had a year of teaching uh, dotilism to uh, independent students who applied and um, the main concern of these people were, were was not actually to learn dotilism or dot painting it was whether they should start a profession from it or from just the art in general and whether if they are good enough to share their works online. So I started five and a half years ago working uh, at a gallery in the touristic center of Budapest and what happened was that I was very passionate about my job and I really wanted to you know get some new modern uh, ideas and new modern uh, products uh, to our shop. So the thing is that we only sell Hungarian uh, handicraft, handcrafts and the reason for that is because we are located in a touristic center so people are not interested at all in buying uh, like Spanish souvenirs in Hungary. They want to buy Hungarian souvenirs. So that's why we have two shops in Vatsi Street and we gather more than 120 artists works, works. So that's how I find I found uh, Dotilism after only three months of working in Intuita shop in the gallery. And yeah, so as soon as I found pictures of this beautiful artwork by Aspen McLean online, I went home and started dotting and that was exactly five years ago and I spent all of my days off sometimes my nights, my evenings, my mornings, my all of my free time dotting and um, so today I would like to just tell you all about how I think of myself as an artist and how I was perceived by the industry. So the first thing that I would like to tell you is actually not a very good thing. It's how hard it is to make it as an artist, at least in Hungary. But I've also applied internationally to so many places that I can say that probably in the world it's extremely hard. Creativity is something that we, all of us, men, women, children, elderly, we all have it in us. So even if you say, oh I can only draw a stick man, I'm not, never going to even think about creative uh, jobs, uh, that might change over time because creativity is how we express ourselves, how we hear ourselves and others and we tell stories by images so the art field is extremely overloaded. There are so many artists and they are all so wonderful. So it's very hard to make it as an artist and I, I was lucky enough to have this workplace and try and sell my things and you know if people wouldn't have liked or bought or purchased my art then I would probably not be here today talking to you about uh, my experiences but that's how lucky I got not everybody uh, has the opportunity to 
work at a gallery where they can also sell their own stuff. So that's why I meant I did not start, I do not start it with the good news because this is very difficult. I'm going to talk to you about, I'm going to tell you about my good experiences and how I uh, got so many good opportunities as well but the thing is it's very hard to earn money through art and uh, I have chosen to become an illustrator about six months ago and I can tell you that even more hard than just painting paintings, creating jewelry and sell them because people just keep under pricing one another so if I tell you I'm going to paint you a painting and you can use it uh, freely online for uh, let's say for 50 euros there is going to be someone who says oh I will do the same for 25 and then the next person will see that and say oh I can do that for 10 as well so that's one thing that is uh, that is making this very difficult and the other thing is the emotional part it's very hard not to give up and say like okay I'm not going to do this anymore but that's it about the hard and bad parts of being an artist I I really think that now I can see that this was just so meant for me and for my personality to become one and I really love to play with colors, to play with techniques and uh, I really would love to have some good causes, like charitable causes with my art and I have been looking up and I was able to help uh, like um, an autism uh, charity and also I used to play the piano so uh, when a company who I, I think it was an organization who teaches uh, piano to children and they do didn't have any prizes they uh, searched me up a few years ago and I gave them like a hundred pieces of my jewelry postcards and uh, painted rocks so that's something that I've always wanted to do and I never knew that I had this in me that people would love to even like they would be happy to have my art so yeah it's it's a really good thing to to give back to people and I always feel so uh, blessed and honored to have a job in the artistic field and to to be able to afford this kind of lifestyle that it was my main uh, point that oh my god one day I just want to give something just to anybody who who is in the need so uh, what happened that I started selling my own art in Intuita shop and uh, then I started searching online for opportunities uh, to, to have my own exhibition and uh, so I applied to countless places, to culture houses, to um, projects for um, like events and stuff and I got really good, a lot of good, very very good opportunities and uh, the best experience was actually kind of a very small, very dusty cafe. It was like having loads of random individuals coming into this cafe and having a look at my art. And we were able to, you know, switch off the lights and show how my art glows in the dark. And I also actually made a lot of money because everybody just wanted to come over and buy my art. Whereas like a year before, I held an exhibition at a huge bank building. It was like, I don't know, it seemed like a, like the, just the inner height was about like 10 meters or so. And it was a giant hall, hallway and 
none of my art pieces were visible because they were there but you know it just got lost in the amount of heights and spaces so there actually no one came over no one bought my stuff even though there was a concert there and i really put a lot of work into it and so yeah the smaller the better that's what i say <laughs> so yeah if you have just started painting creating jewelry i would suggest to google google like artist submission google the local uh, communities uh, that you would love to join or the culture houses my very first exhibition was actually uh, at a culture house on international women's day so i really felt so proud <laughs> to be able uh, to be a part of this um, event and yeah so you you can join literally so many causes that you feel uh, empowered by or that you feel like you would like to support them even if not you can just search up like exhibition places and i know that in a lot of places you, you will have to pay a lot of money to be able to have your own art there but just keep googling don't, don't give up and you will find a place and uh, the next thing that I did was um, I saw an opportunity of selling art on the street in a courtyard actually and uh, if I went there on a Thursdays on Thursdays to sell it was for free if I went there on the weekends I had to pay like 60 euros and they couldn't guarantee that I will sell anything so I didn't join and by the way I work at weekends as well so uh, I went there on Thursdays and there were lots of sales there as well there as well so what I would like to suggest to anybody who would love to you know sell their own art is just to get started search for opportunities where you don't have to pay anything to be able to showcase your art and then pay attention to the audience like how do they see your art would they purchase it do they say that it's beautiful but i don't have the money for it that's even like that's almost the same as buying your art because if they just say like mm, this is not <laughs> my style or that you see that like over the course of a year no one buys your art then you will just know that you have to improve but that's all that doesn't mean you have to stop that just means that you need to improve so that's the next thing that is something i wanted to talk about is all of your friends your family foreign uh, not foreigners strangers on the street everybody has an opinion and their opinion doesn't have to be doesn't have to define your art my best friend is actually my biggest critic <laughs> and I don't always agree with her sometimes I I have to like I just keep explaining to her like this is what I do you have to you need to accept it and then she just keeps pushing me and pushing me but that's also a good thing because I know I need to improve in a lot of ways and uh, sometimes I follow her advice and sometimes I don't but the thing is that not everybody is going to love your art and that's okay and you need to keep reminding yourself that this is okay so in general these were my experiences for the past five years if you have any questions then please feel free to leave the comments in the disc in below and thank you for watching bye